Welcome back to the terminal everybody. 2019 has just begun and along with it Deepin 15.9 has arrived. Deepin has been around for a while and is based on Debian Unstable. However, it really gained much of its popularity and even controversy last year. A new edition is released every two months or so and with each release minor updates and bug fixes are delivered until the next one. Unlike the previous release, Deepin 15.9 comes with a few minor graphical improvements but mainly focuses on the new features. The installer, as well as the desktop, now features a new default background and the grub bootloader theme looks nice too. And as the previous release introduced its end user license agreement that must be accepted before proceeding with the installation, this one has it as well. So. Let's take a look at the bootloader and the boot screen. Initially, you are greeted with a nice boot splash logo and then greeted with the login screen. Once on the desktop, the panel is featured in what is called the fashion mode for those who prefer to have the look of a dock. And the second mode features the traditional look of a panel with the launchers on the left and the system tray icons on the right. By default, Many applications are native to Deepin and their size on the menu can be changed by holding the control button and moving the scroll wheel on your mouse. The look of the dark theme for the native applications has also slightly changed primarily on the title bar and the Deepin terminal now allows custom themes to be added. Moving along, let's see what the new features have been added to this uh, new edition. So for one, the new touchscreen support for gestures has been added. So if you have, if you're on a laptop that has touchscreen support, you can go ahead and take a look at what these new gestures are. But also, custom photos can be dragged to change the theme of the grub menu. Also, a new on-screen keyboard has been added, which is a neat little feature to have. And what's really important is that now mirror options have been added in order to help deliver the updates faster. Finally, the power settings have been modified for laptop users to be able to switch settings separately for when the laptop is plugged in and off. The system still uses about a gigabyte of RAM and is not the most resource friendly distribution or desktop environment out there. So if you're using older hardware, I would recommend trying something else. Overall, Deepin manages to create a beautiful desktop experience with polished look and properly proportioned and spaced system tray icons. Something that's unfortunately not the case with other desktop environments. The biggest problem with this distribution, however, is that it uses its own repositories in the Deepin store which contain a lot of outdated applications. This can be troublesome to those who need to use specific programs which may be outdated by a couple of months. But for an average user who simply browses the internet, this may not be so much of a problem. Although as a whole, it's an issue that drives many people away from using this distro. So would I recommend this distro? Well, I can see how this would appeal to those who are not very familiar with Linux, who might come from Windows or even Mac, and those who want an as easy as possible setup and would just want something maybe that just works or that's easy to use. So I, I understand that. Although I personally would recommend using an Arch-based distribution with the Deepin desktop environment as it is more lightweight and offers packages which are up to date. So this has been it for the quick overview of Deepin 15.9. Make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.